What do you need? We heard Veronica talking with the Elder. We won't stand for this. Hmm. She'd be doing a greater service by carrying out her duties and not trying to undermine the Elder's authority. This had better be the last time her loyalty falters. You've been warned. We heard Veronica talking with the Elder. I should get used to this, I guess. People get desperate. They turn on each other. First thing to go is trust. I don't think it's ever gonna be the same for me in there. Knowing no matter what I do, it's gonna end badly. But they're all I have. Yeah, I've got the rest of my life to help them out. I could spare a little while to see things through with you. No, I think it is. I have to be resolved about this. If I waver, it'll just make things harder. They need me, and I'm not going to abandon them. Good idea. Your presence here, let's just say it's highly irregular. Outsiders aren't even allowed to know that our bunker's here, let alone come and go freely. You impressed Elder McNamara, obviously. He must believe that you'd be very useful. So, you've been talking to Harden, eh? He's been looking for a way to usurp McNamara ever since the lockdown started. Don't get me wrong, he's a good man. But Elder McNamara has done all right by us. If it weren't for him, none of us would have survived at Helios. I'll tell you what I told Harden. There have been only a few cases of elders being dismissed from their posts in the Brotherhood's history. And those involve crimes that someone like Elder McNamara is just not capable of. You can look it up for yourself if you want. I'll grant you access to that portion of the history section of our data store. See senior scribe Ibsen about accessing it. I'm sure someone's told you all this before. Several years back, we were running our chapter out the Helios One solar power station. Our elder at the time, Elijah, had some kind of obsession with the place, which is the only reason we stayed as long as we did. That place was hardly defensible, and we knew the NCR was moving in on us, but the Elder refused to budge, insisting that he just needed more time. We never found out what he needed time for. Wave upon wave of NCR troopers hit us from all directions. We held out for a time, but we were grossly outnumbered, and they had more men than we had ammo. Eventually, our positions collapsed. Elder Elijah was nowhere to be found, so McNamara took charge and led what remained of us on a counteroffensive west. We lost a lot of men and women, but we broke through and made it here. Make no mistake, McNamara saved this chapter that day. Who was Elijah more like? He was our elder before McNamara. Bright guy, but just between you and me, he was a little off. Our mission is to recover and preserve the technology of the past, but Elijah wanted more. He sought ways to improve upon technology, make it better. When we found Helios One, he was like a kid in a candy store. He kept talking about the potential, and a grand design never realized. He even insisted we set up our base there, against the objection of nearly every paladin. What followed is a whole other story. Bye. Hello. Can I help you with something? We always make sure to keep an ample supply of rat away. Most of us haven't had the exposure outsiders like you take for granted. Here we go. You'll be rat free in no time.
Found the missing patrols, or was something else on your mind? They were all dead then. I suppose I'm not surprised. We have few friends in the world above, and many enemies. But we must turn our minds to other matters. When I sent out those patrols, I also sent three knights out on scouting missions. When the patrols failed to return, we assumed the worst, and sent a single communication to the scouts to hold position and maintain radio silence. I want you to contact those scouts and gather their reports. Like the patrols, they have devices on them that will enable you to track them. When you find them, tell them you're my representative and ask them if the bears are still hunting. That should get them to talk to you. Return when you've gathered all of their reports. Have you had any luck finding the scouts? Or did you...
Thank you for getting Janet to Nellis. I've never been so happy in my entire life. Bye. Thank you for getting me here. Jack is a great guy. Hello, outsider. Well, how about that? Turns out you aren't completely useless working with your hands. Don't get blown. Good work with those. Really? Welcome back. I see the power's back on. The ants are all dead? Maybe Pearl is right about you. Because I don't know how you pulled that off. I'll tell Loyal to send someone down to clear out the eggs and repair the generators. Good work. What is it, Outsider? The next time you leave Nellis, keep an eye out for missiles. We're down to a five-year supply for our launchers. Come find me when you've got some to turn in. How many? Good work. How many? Good work. All right. I can take care of that robot. You have done well to earn the trust of my people, child. I believe the time has come for you to show your value in full. The people have come to accept having you around. Find Loyal and ask him about our people's fondest dream. He will tell you what to do next. You have done well to earn the trust of my people, child. Loyal still needs help getting the plane back to Nellis, and there may be others who still require assistance. 
Bye. We can't sit idly while the Legion prepares their own elite forces. Pearl sent word saying it's all right to tell you about the Lady and the Water. A long time ago, long before the war that killed just about everything that ever lived, a bomber crashed not far from here. A bomber was a flying contraption that could drop explosives down on anything it flew over. But anyway, moving on. This bomber crashed down in Lake Mead, pretty damn near intact. When we got to Nellis, see, I found this article in a magazine all about it. There was another B-29 around here, part of a museum. Couldn't fly, but had a lot of spare parts, see? Get where I'm going? Since I was a young man, I've dreamed of raising that lady from the lake and bringing her back to life. What do you say? It's at the bottom of Lake Mead. I'll mark its location on your Pip-Boy map. Simple. Attach deployable ballast to the plane and float it on up. Here is a remote detonator. Once the ballast is attached to the plane, just hit the detonator from the shore and let buoyancy handle the rest. Maybe you don't understand. Hasn't been one of us, not a one, to set a foot outside Nellis in over 50 years. You come along with your knowledge of the outside, and it seems the time's come to raise the lady after all. Good. Here's the deployable ballast. Go find the plane, attach the ballast, and hit the button. Might try holding your breath. If that doesn't sound good enough, talk to Jack. He was working on a rebreather once. I've never been so happy in my entire life. I just need some parts from a pressure cooker to create a hermetic seal for the rebreather. Great. That's all I need. I've never been so happy in my entire life. Have you found a pressure cooker so I can finish the rebreather? That's a brilliant idea. I can put that together right now. Here you go, a new rebreather. Bye.
Please, help me. Thank God. Let me down, please. Thanks for getting me down from that cross. I owe you one. They did? <laughs> Probably mostly Jack's idea. He always was the soft touch. Thanks. You've saved my life and done the great cons a huge favor. I'll be heading back to Red Rock Canyon now. Maybe we'll see each other there. Okay, but keep it quick. I'd like to get out of here before the Legionnaires come to check on me. A Legion patrol caught me trying to cross the river. When they found the, um, package I was carrying, they strung me up there. Well, not exactly. More like trying to expand our markets. I heard there was a lot of untapped territory down south, but the Legion caught me. So long. What? Halt! What business have you in Cottonwood Cove, outsider? You were the Mark of Kaisar. You must be who Cursor Lucullus is waiting for. You may continue, but be warned. Mark or no, we will not tolerate aggressive action by visitors in the camp. Move along. Awe, are you ready to head upriver? I am Cursar Lucullus, and my orders are to escort you to the Legion's camp at Fortification Hill. Are you ready to go? You'll be meeting face to face with the mighty Kaisar himself, founder of the Legion, conqueror of 86 tribes. To my knowledge, this is the first time Kaisar has ever summoned one of the dissolute to see him. That it would be a woman is even more surprising. All who are not Legion are dissolute. They live in squalor, unrestrained by morality, lacking moderation, temper, and self-control. Their very existence is a blight on the common good. Even worse are the profligates, the subtype of dissolute one finds this side of the river. They hold themselves to be civilized, when in fact they are corrupt and self-interested. The truth will be made clear to them soon enough. You'd know better than I would. But you must be remarkable for Kaisar to take such an interest. The trip will take a few hours. Take your place on the boat. By order of Kaisar, all visitors must disarm and relinquish all banned items. This order also extends to the platinum chip you carry. For now. Alcohol and all chems, including stims and other addictive items. I know not why Kaisar would wish to speak with such a physically inferior whelp, but I will allow this one exception. You may bear Kaisar's mark, but do not attempt to share any of your medicine with anyone in the fort. Kaisar strictly forbids the use of chems and alcohol. By his order, all visitors must also relinquish their arms upon entry. If you come in peace, then there is no reason to not disarm. You will not be harmed unless Kaisar wills it. Your belongings will be returned to you when you leave. Awe. True to Kaisar. I'm looking forward to getting sent across the river. Move along. So you're the visitor I've heard some of the legionaries talking about. If you're in the mood to trade, just say the word. I haven't had the pleasure, 
I have crossed paths with Legate Lanius, his second in command, however. It was unpleasant. He's the best the Legion has to offer, or so the Legionaries say. Brute of a man, wears a fancy metal mask in a battle. He killed one of my pack Brahmins simply because it was in his way. I knew better than to complain about it, though. Shoot. No, ma'am. I'm an independent trader from Arizona. Not at all. They're my best customers. As long as you don't try to sell them chems or alcohol, they treat you fair. Hell, I don't even need to travel with guards most of the time in Legion territory. All the bandits are dead or run off. Between having to hire protection and getting slapped with taxes, it's more profitable to stick to Arizona and New Mexico. But I do cross the river from time to time when an opportunity comes along. All right. Have a look. Excuse me. Hold your tongue, wastrel. I'm harsh on the I children, but they'll be excellent legionaries. Fight. I'm quite proud of them. Should have brought something. I'm looking forward to getting sent across the river. You're the courier who caused so much trouble for my legion. And yet you dare come before me. All the bribes I sent to the Omertas ended up buying me nothing. So tell me this, because I really want to know. I am feared with good reason. But you, of all people, dare to come here and stand before me, the mighty Kaisar. What were you thinking? Maybe I should have you struck blind so my face is the last sight you ever behold. Look. You do know why I wanted to meet you, right? A man nearly kills you, so you track him across the breadth of the Mojave? You arrive on the strip and waltz into the Lucky 38 like someone left you a key under the doormat? You assassinate the head of the chairman in his own casino and get away with it? Then something happens to Mr. House's robot, some kind of military upgrade? When you set your mind to something, you get results. I like that. The question is, are you ready to get started? I have eyes and ears everywhere. It behooves me not to invade the West blind and deaf. It hasn't been hard to track your progress. It's not as though you've been keeping a low profile. The time is fast approaching when my legion will assault the Great Dam and invade the West. Before that happens, I want Mr. House knocked out of the game. A quick one-two punch with you doing the punching. Down the hill, at the west edge of camp, is an old building. It was here when the fort was taken in 2277. Inside the building is a hatch, and inside that hatch are two steel doors that bear the sigil of the Lucky 38 Casino. Now that same sigil is on the platinum chip you were carrying. Isn't that interesting? Even more interesting, there's a slot about the same size as the chip on the console that opens the hatch. So you know what I think? I think the platinum chip 
opens those doors. Doors that can't be pried open or drilled open or blasted open. Because all that, I tried. I want you to destroy whatever you find in there. And then I want you to come back here and tell me about it. So go to the building and take this fucking platinum chip with you. My legionaries will meet you there, with your weapons and equipment. Goodbye. I'm looking forward to getting sent across the river. Kaisar has permitted your weapons to be returned to you while you serve him. Kaisar has put a lot of trust in you. Be worth it. I see you reached your destination safely. Shall we get to work? As you know, the Platinum Chip upgrades my Securitron's operating software. Well, there's an army of them here. The Securitron's policing this strip are a fraction of the total number manufactured. The rest I stored here. I need you to manually upload the data from the chip to the facility's primary computer. There's a terminal at the other end of this facility. There's a complication. While I can broadcast to this screen, I can't control any of the facility's systems. That means I can't deactivate its security bots, most of which appear to be active according to the status board I'm looking at. My army will do what an army does best, defend territory from invaders and maintain order. The same equipment failure that prevents me from remotely operating this facility seems to have activated its security robots and turrets. There's a security room near the base of the stairs. Perhaps you can deactivate them yourself. Good. I won't hold you up any longer. Yes. 
is a lot more good. You mean like this melee weapon? Does jumping it? so we can discuss next steps. You have a very bright future ahead of you. Thanks to your actions today, so does the rest of mankind. You've carried out Kaisar's will. I'm looking forward to getting sent across the river. Our way, true to... Should have brought something to... Kaiser. I felt the ground shake a while ago. I'll take that as a sign you've got the job done. Let's press on, shall we? As I was telling you before, I want Mr. House out of the picture. You have an interest in his death, too. If he knows that you destroyed his gadgets beneath the fort, he will strike back. You know where to find him. How he dies, I leave up to you. What did you want to know? My Praetorians embody the martial ideals of my legion. Each one of them has done enough conquering and killing to deserve the rank of Centurion. Instead, I invited them to join my guard. So the invitee chooses whichever current guard he thinks is weakest and challenges him. The fight is to the death. It keeps them from getting complacent. Lucius has been the head of my guard for five years now. He was a subordinate guard for eight before that. No invitee has dared to challenge him yet. Maybe it's an issue of respect. He is getting on in years. 
What else did you want to know? Wolpes is the best of my frumentari. A remarkable individual from an unremarkable tribe south of the Utah. He was brought into the Legion as a boy. Survived training. Fought well enough as a legionary to be promoted to the rank of Decanus. Then in battle against an unimportant tribe. He broke ranks and led his contubernium through a hole in their defenses to capture its chieftain. Well, his Kentorian wanted him crucified for disobedience. So I made him a frumentari. Whatever I require, infiltration, assassination, dramatic atrocities to break the spirit of the enemy, et cetera. They're mentally flexible. They operate behind enemy lines for extended periods, imitating the enemy's customs without becoming sullied. In all these things, Wolpus is a master. What else did you want to know? Linnaeus is the greatest of my battlefield commanders. Some might call him a great man, but I'm not sure he qualifies. Once, he was the greatest warrior of the Hydebarks, a tribe of the Arizona. Maniacal in battle. Sometimes he'd ambush Legion patrols by himself. When after several months we found and surrounded the Hydebarks camp, their chieftain raised a banner of surrender. The warrior, who was not yet Linnaeus, went insane with rage. He struck down his chieftain and attacked his own tribe. He killed 15 before they brought him down. He didn't die, obviously. I had him tended to. He was maimed, most of his face torn off. It was days before he regained consciousness. When he did, I went to his bedside and showed him the helmet I'd had forged to cover his face. I said he could have it if he'd fight for me. He accepted, on condition that he be allowed to kill the surviving males of his tribe. I said, make it the adult males, and you have a deal. The Neus is savage. Savagely loyal, too, but only to me. He has no love for my legion. But this has its uses. He has no attachment to his men, no compunction about battlefield losses. All he cares about is destroying the enemy. When another Legatus or a Kenturian fails to achieve results, I send Linnaeus to make things right. His first step is to beat the failed commander to death in front of his assembled troops. Then he orders the ritual of Decimatio. It means decimation. But in ancient Rome, the word had a very specific meaning, a punishment for cowardice. The legionaries are lined up in ranks. Every 10th man steps forward and is beaten to death by his brothers. It instills a certain robust obedience. Yes, this time my legionaries will be more frightened of the commander behind them than the enemy before them. There will be no failure this time, no retreat, no years of gathering slaves and resources for another assault. With Linnaeus to drive the Legion forward, the dam will be taken. It will be our bridgehead across the Colorado. It's not going to happen again, that's all I have to say about it. And I've heard it's a bad idea to tempt the wrath of Kaisar. Change the subject. What else did you want to know? Do you want my opinion as a former citizen or future conqueror? Actually, my opinion is the same either way. As a young man, I was taught to venerate President Tandy of Shady Sands, the founding mother of the new California Republic. Did you know her presidency lasted 52 years? And that her father, Aradesh, was the Republic's first president? Does that sound like a democracy to you? or a hereditary dictatorship. Because the council didn't dare oppose her. She was too popular. She had the people's love. So things ran smoothly, more or less. And as soon as she was gone, as soon as there really could be democracy, what happened then? Ever since losing its queen, the NCR has been weaker, more diffuse. Democracy has been its weakness, not its strength. 
Greed runs rampant. The government is corrupt, accepting bribes from Brahmin barons and landowners to the detriment of citizens. The NCR is a loose conglomerate of individuals looking out for themselves. It's lost virtue. No one cares about the collective, the greater good. It's not built to last. I'm just hastening the inevitable. Of course, the most powerful my legion has faced. Also the first to which I am ideologically opposed. Until now, every tribe I've conquered has been so backwards and stunted, enslavement has been a gift bestowed upon them. My conquest of the Mojave will be a glorious triumph, marking the transition of the Legion from a basically nomadic tribe to a genuine empire. Just as my namesake campaigned in Gaul before he crossed the Rubicon, so have I campaigned and will cross the Colorado. What else did you want to know? I know he's a coward, hiding behind an army of robots ensconced in that tower of his like a wizard in one of those grognak comic books. Some say he's a man, others a machine. I don't care. He's in the way. What else did you want to know? I've analyzed the region's tribe to determine how they might be useful. I may tell you more at a later time, if it suits me. What else did you want to know? Ironically, I was born a profligate myself, a citizen of the NCR. My family lived not far from the Great Boneyard. After raiders killed my father, my mother sought the followers' protection. I was two years old. She found work at their library, cooking and cleaning. I learned how to read, and soon I was taking courses, free of charge. Oh yes, raised in that tradition. And the teaching stuck. I was taught it was my responsibility to bring the torch of knowledge to the waste. I may have taken the torch part more literally than they intended. When I was 20, the followers sent me east to Grand Canyon. It was my first expedition. Just me and a physician named Calhoun. As an anthropologist and linguist, my assignment was to learn the dialects of the Grand Canyon tribes. What a fucking waste of time. If you think it's worthwhile to make smart people learn how to talk like backward savages, you're a follower of the apocalypse. Or an idiot. Anyway, we met up with a Mormon missionary who already knew a bunch of dialects. Joshua Graham. He was supposed to teach me, but before that went too far, the Blackfoot tribe captured us to hold us for ransom. They were a backward bunch, but the real problem was they didn't know how to fight. The Blackfoot were at war with seven other tribes, each just as pissant as they were. But outnumbered like that, they weren't going to last long. It's one thing to be taken hostage, another to be lashed to a sinking ship. So over Calhoun's objections, I decided to take certain steps. I taught them how to use the guns they already had, how to strip and clean them, how to breathe when pulling a trigger, how to reload ammunition. They looked at me like I was some kind of a sorcerer. So I taught them how to make explosives and started drilling them on small unit tactics. If there's anything I learned as a follower of the apocalypse, it's that there's a lot of good information in old books. Duide et impira, divide and conquer. I led the Blackfoot against the Ridgers, their weakest enemy. When they refused to surrender, I ordered every man, woman, and child killed. When next we surrounded the Kaibabs, and they likewise refused, I took one of their envoys to the Ridgers village and showed him the corpse piles. This was new for the tribes, you see. They played at war raiding each other, a little rape and pillage here, a little ransoming there. I showed them total warfare. Like I said, there's a lot you can learn from old books. Kaibobs joined me, and the Fredonians after that. All the pissant tribes with names that should be forgotten. I knew from the start I'd need to eradicate this plague of tribal identities, replacing them with a monolithic culture, a uniform identity. So that's what I did, once my confederation of tribes was large enough. I crowned myself Kaisar, 
and created a single great tribe, my legion. I sent Calhoun, the follower captured with me back west, with a message that I should not be interfered with. Joshua Graham, the Mormon interpreter, stayed with me and served as my first legatus. That's right. Decades of warfare, absorbing lesser tribes, gathering power, forging the dross into a vast, razor-sharp scythe. My legion's expansion has never ceased. Much of the Utah and Colorado and all of Arizona and New Mexico are mine. We have cities of our own, but nothing compared to Vegas. Finally, my legion will have its Rome. What else did you want to know? I used Imperial Rome as the model for my legion precisely because it was so foreign, so alien. I'd seen what had become of the NCR's attempts to emulate the culture of pre-war America, the infighting, the corruption. Rome was a highly militarized autocracy that effectively integrated the foreign cultures it conquered. It dedicated its citizens to something higher than themselves, to the idea of Rome itself. In Rome, I found a template for a society equal to the challenges of the post-apocalyptic world, a society that could and would survive, a society that could prevent mankind from fracturing and destroying itself in this new world by establishing a new Pax Romana. It means a nationalist, imperialist, totalitarian, homogenous culture that obliterates the identity of every group it conquers. Long-term stability at all costs. The individual has no value beyond his utility to the state, whether as an instrument of war or production. No, I'll destroy it because it's inevitable that it be destroyed. It's Hegelian dialectics, not personal animosity. How do I put this basically enough? It's a philosophical theory, the kind you might encounter if you took time to read some books. The fundamental premise is to envision history as a sequence of dialectical conflicts. Each dialectic begins with a proposition, a thesis, which inherently contains or creates its opposite, an antithesis. Thesis and antithesis. The conflict is inevitable. But the resolution of the conflict yields something new, a synthesis, eliminating the flaws in each, leaving behind common elements and ideas. The bombs wiped the slate clean. Human civilization descended to a level of ignorance that effectively set our cultural progress back to zero. The NCR has all the problems of the ancient Roman Republic, extreme bureaucracy, corruption, extensive senatorial infighting. Just as with the ancient republic, it is natural that a military force should conquer and transform the NCR into a military dictatorship. Thesis and antithesis. The Colorado River is my Rubicon. The NCR council will be eradicated, but the new synthesis will change the legion as well from a basically nomadic army to a standing military force that protects its citizens and the power of its dictator. What else did you want to know? It's called an auto doc. As the name suggests, it's an automated physician, more or less. He can treat broken bones, cuts, punctures, scrapes. Sometimes I bestow its use upon someone I favor. Makes for a powerful gift in a culture that forbids painkillers and is largely ignorant of medical science. What else did you want to know? What else, then? Complete your mission, then return to me. Camps are getting crowded. Ah, oh, just when the st
again. Should have brought some. Where to, partner? Good to see you. The foundation is laid. My Securitrons on the strip are upgraded and those at the fort ready for action. Now it's just a matter of adjusting the attitudes of some lesser groups while we wait for Caesar's Legion to attack Hoover Dam. Outside New Vegas, at what was once called Nellis Air Force Base, resides an unusual tribe known as the Boomers. They are, shall we say, aggressively reclusive, they have several howitzers they fire at anyone who dares approach the base. Artillery of this sort has a range of several miles. If it's going to fire on Hoover Dam, I want it firing at my targets. If not, then I want to make sure that the Boomers don't sign similar treaties to fire their guns in support of the NCR or Caesar's Legion. Use extreme caution when approaching the base. Their firepower is considerable. Recently, one of my roaming Securitrons observed a man near the base studying the pattern of its artillery fire. Maybe he's learned something. Any progress with the boomers? I'd rather you... They occupied Nellis Air Force Base a little over 50 years ago. One of my Securitrons got some video of their arrival and then exploded. Odds are they were vault dwellers. That's everything I know about them, really. What else did you want to discuss? New Vegas is more than a city. It's the remedy to mankind's derailment. The city's economy is a blast furnace in which can be forged the steel of a new rail line running straight to a new horizon. What is the NCR? A society of people desperate to experience comfort, ease, luxury. A society of customers. With all that money pouring in, give me 20 years and I'll reignite the high technology development sectors. 50 years, and I'll have people in orbit. 100 years, and my colony ships will be heading for the stars to search for planets unpolluted by the wrath and folly of a bygone generation. I prefer the term autocrat. I would rule as a chief executive. I would not answer to a board of directors or any other entity. Nothing to impede progress. If you want to see the fate of democracies, look out the windows. My judgment. I have no interest in abusing others, just as I have no interest in legislating or otherwise dictating what people do in their private time. Nor have I any interest in being worshipped as some kind of machine god messiah. I am impervious to such corrupting ambitions. But autocracy? Firm control in the hands of a technological and economic visionary? Yes, that Vegas shall have. What else did you want to discuss? Goodbye.
ต่อ